Derek Hunter. So Emmett, everyone seems to have a story about what they did during quarantine from, from March through July or whenever you came back. So what was yours? What'd you do? Where'd you go? What'd you work on? Uh, well, I went home and as we all know, Washington was not the best in the best condition with everything going on at first. So I went home and I probably sat in the house and played a lot of Xbox for the first week and I was able to work out outside. And then, you know, a week or two after that, I was able to find a gym and I was able to work out with some guys that, you know, I kind of grew up with. And, you know, a few of those guys like Malachi Flynn, who is in the NBA draft, a point guard from San Diego State. And then uh, David Jenkins, who is uh, preseason, I think he's preseason player of the year. Uh, he's at UNLV, Alfonso Anderson. That was, he's at Utah State right now. So I was able to work out with some pretty good guys out there. Uh, I was also able to work out with Jonte Murray. So, you know, I had ample time to get a lot of workouts in. And I mean, I was home for, what, like three months, I want to say. So, you know, being there, being able to work out with those guys and just work on all of my skills, not just one thing, because, you know, I'm going against some of the top players in the country. So, you know, while doing that and, you know, perfecting my craft and pretty much just had a lot of fun while I was back home, you know, enjoyed the time because that's, that's probably the major thing that I've missed since being out here. I've never really had time to go home for a long period of time. I think the longest I went home for was maybe 10 days. Oh, no. Before Spain, I went home for like, we all went home for a month, but that was the first time I've been home. I felt like I was in high school still, so. John and Tonic. Hey, Em, and I'll ask you this. I asked Jordan this before. Um, you know, the best team this year uh, might not be the most talented team. It might be the team that stays intact the longest because of the virus. Have you guys talked about that, about how you uh, to, to stay healthy, to, to realize the goals that you want this year? I think we talk about it almost every day. You know, I feel like, like you said, this year isn't going to be the team that's the best or the most skilled or the tallest. It's going to be the team that is really just uh, the most resilient. And I mean, you know, hey, we're all college students. You know, at the end of the day, you get to college. Obviously, partying is one thing that, you know, obviously we all have to give up. You know, you don't have time to go hang out all the time. You don't have time. You can't really do that because, for one, we're getting tested every three days. And, if you if one of your tests pops up positive, you know you're sitting out for ten days, and then you got to do all the other tests to make sure your heart and everything is okay. So, you know, I think just we all have kind of voiced our opinion on that, and you know, if we if we do want to all hang out, you know, we'll all come together as a team, and we'll go to one of our, you know, one of our players, one of the players' apartments, and get some pizza, and we'll, you know, watch some of the games, and that's about you know what we're used to now. That's kind of the new lifestyle. So, I'm real quick. I'm guessing. Because you're an athlete, you're used to sacrifices anyway. Mm -hmm. Totally. So like, like general students maybe don't have the – are asked to do the sacrifices that you guys have to do. No, not at all. I mean, obviously, it's different for a normal student. I mean, you have kids that don't really care, you know, and then you have kids that do care and whatnot. So there's kids that go out all the time, and you see it on their Snapchat, Instagram stories, and, you know, they're all having that fun time. But, you know, it's just one of those sacrifices we have to make because at the end of the day, we all have a goal, and which is to win a national championship. So, you know, we got to give up those things for that. I'm fine with that. Go ahead, Greg. Emmett, so go back to last year. You started really well. Then, you know, as you've talked about, you hit a slump and then finished strong as well. So what do you think was part of the slump? So what did you work on in the off season to hopefully avoid that the next time around? Uh, I, you know, I honestly just worked on – you know, trying to be more consistent. Uh, obviously, that was one of the problems I ran into last year. And, you know, I, I just – that was my first year kind of being in a, a bigger role. And, you know, I didn't know what was expected of me. So, I kind of was just going out there the first few games and just doing whatever. And, you know, it was working. And then, you know, when the game didn't work for me, yeah, I just kind of folded up into the ball. And I kind of went back to what I was doing freshman year instead of, you know, staying resilient and, and being confident and going out there and just playing my game. So, you know, this year I'm kind of just going to be more confident. You know, a lot of it is just, you know, being right mentally and going out there and knowing that, you know, I'm going to play my game and not worry about all the other stuff that's going on. Freddie Nesper. Hey, Emmett. So uh, you, Jordan, and Derek are, are the uh, longest tenured Mountaineers right now. Um, <laughs> do you feel like you're one of the older guys, one of the veterans? And then 
you know, just from you being here the longest, do you feel like you're you're now able to kind of show the show guys the ropes and you know explain to them how everything works with Huggins and the system and everything? No, I feel like I honestly feel like you know, for me, Derek and Jordan, we were able to do that last year. Uh, I think last year, I'm not sure how many new guys we brought in, but I know we brought in a bunch and. You know, over that summer when we were back home, you know, the coaches, they voiced to us, like, you know, when we get all these new guys here, they're going to need help along the way. And it's not going to be easy because you're going to have guys that are knuckleheads that don't want to listen at first. But, you know, once they get it and they start to listen, they'll start playing better. And, you know, I think that's going into this year, it's been a little easier because we have guys coming back like Taz, we have Gabe. You know, we got a lot of guys that came back from last year's team. So, you know, we got, what, two, we got two freshmen or two or three freshmen and, you know, we got Keidre in. So, you know, it's been easy to get those guys rolling because everybody's been here, so to say. I mean, you know, even if you've been here for a year, you can kind of help out and, you know, you can show everybody along. And I think we all know what to expect from Hugs at this point. You know, we've all been here for the summer. You know, we've we've seen enough of Hugs so far. And, you know, we're just – we all know what to expect. Greg Hunter. So, Emma, one of those new guys or semi-new guys is is the guy behind you in, in Jalen Bridges. So, have you taken him under your wing? What what do you see out of Jalen? Oh, uh, what I see out of Jalen, I mean, Jalen Jalen's got me by about an inch. So, you know, when when Jalen first got here, you know, over the recruitment process, it, it wasn't easy to you know try to get him to come here. You know, he was, you know, he was just torn beside you know leaving home or wanting to move away and and stuff and. So when we locked him in as a commit, you know, I kind of, I committed to, you know, making him the best that he can be. So, you know, every day I try to push him because I know what his potential is. And he's he's long armed, he's tall, he can shoot the ball really well. He can get to the basket, he can finish. And there's not really anything in his game that I don't like at the time. I mean, he's he's been phenomenal since, you know, since we've started up and I think he's only gonna get better. I mean, obviously he's a freshman technically you know, but having that red shirt year and being able to get out there, especially with the guys last year, and, you know, he kind of just feeds right into the system. And obviously having him behind me is going to help me because I really wasn't able to get a lot of breaks last year, so. Kevin Kinder. Other than playing basketball, what's the best way for you to get to know other guys, get to know what makes them tick a little bit? Um. It's it's really interesting, you know. We have a lot of guys, and we have a lot of guys that are they're into different things. So you know, when we get a guy like Kedran, he's from he's from down south, and I already know Taz. Taz is from down south, and I think their cities are not too far apart from each other. So you know, I, I know what to expect from Taz. So when Kedran came here, I kind of expected the same thing. Kedran's just a little different. He's he's I think he's more southern than Taz. Don't tell him I said that. So. Um, other than that, I think, you know, playing Xbox, playing PlayStation, whatever it is with your teammates, um, you know, just hanging out with them, just talking to them, learning a little bit about them, hearing their story, hearing where they come from, um, little, just little things like that. I mean, it's, it's really anything. You, you kind of just pick every everything up that they give to you, and then you kind of just really become friends with them. So. Okay, we'll go to Cody Nesper. So um, I want to ask you about Jermaine. Just with all the different roles he played on the team last year, is it going to have to be like a team-wide effort to replace everything that he did? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think, you know, Jermaine was – he was really big for this team, and I think he was really big, you know, for – I think, you know, Deuce, Deuce kind of came out along the way, and I think it took some of the slack off of Jermaine having to play point guard. You know, obviously Jermaine played the one, two, three, four, whatever you name it, he was playing it. But – I think the difference between last year's team and this year's team is we don't need a guy that can play that many positions because we have so many guys that already play that position. You know, we have a whole bunch of point guards. We have a whole bunch of shooting guards. You know, we now have three wings. We have Gabe down there with the bigs. You know, we have we have a whole bunch of guys. And I think the good thing about this year's team is we have so many guys as versatile. And, you know, I can play. I, I think this year I'll be able to play the two, three, and the four. You know, obviously Gabe can play the three, four, and probably play the five if he wanted. Deuce is flex. Deuce can go at when he, anywhere he wants on the court. I mean, it just depends on where they want to throw him at. I just think this team is so much different from last year. Just, I honestly think it's a complete turnaround. I think you know, just bringing Oscar back and Derek back, and just bringing everybody back, knowing what to expect, and then obviously everybody getting better over the summer. It's just going to help us as a team. 
Any other questions for Emmett? All right, Emmett, appreciate the time. Thanks so much. All right, you guys have a good one.